Greetings, and welcome to this installment of Introductory Solid Modeling with SolidWorks. And by now, you should have completed all of the parts and assemblies of the screwdriver. And that includes making the configurations for the flathead, hex head, and Phillips head assemblies. Today, we are going to make an assembly drawing from all of these. And in some aspects, it's pretty easy, and in other aspects, it can be a little annoying. But let's just dig in. Starting from our screwdriver assembly, we'll go to New Make Part from Drawing Assembly. Let's ask for a drawing. And we'll start with the default landscape here. And we'll go to View Layout model view, double click here, and bring this out here like this. Now, there's a problem. I don't actually want it to be like this. What if I wanted it to be vertically oriented? The problem is that it brings it in on the front, and I defined the front this way, but I want it to be front the other way. So I'm going to escape out of this undo, undo, and I'm going to show you different ways of making this work. Two of them require going back to this setup and changing some things around. The first one I'm going to show you is how to change the default views. So if you hit your spacebar, this cool menu comes up. This menu up here is a subset of that. And I want this view here to be the top. So if I hit my spacebar again, I'm going to click on Update Standard Views. And I want this view to be the top view so that bringing it down will bring it vertically and make it into the front view. So I'm going to make that the top. And the thing is, a bunch of different things, the named and child views and all that stuff will change up. So but here we go. Got yes. Okay, so now if I go to front view, then I get what I want. Going to go over to our drawing and go to view layout, model view, double click here, and voila, that came in just like I wanted it to. Okay, that's one way. That can be just great for anybody else who comes along, which is good. Now, I'm going to go back and change this there we go. back, and this is going to become the front view. Accept that again. Okay, so how can I do this a second way? I can create a saved view. Now, this will bring it to the front. If I kind of come close to my view like this, and I go here, it will orient itself so that it does come nice and vertically to that particular plane that I clicked on, but in a more vertical orientation. So it's pretty smart like that. So then I can go instead to my sheet here, go to model view, and double click on this. Before I start coming over here, I can click on current model view, and that brings it in nicely. Another option is to go back to here, get it into this orientation, and go here. I'm going to add a new view. I'm going to name this vertical front. Hit OK. Then go to my drawing. Go to model view. Double click again. And notice how vertical front comes up here in orientation. So then I can do that as well. Finally, I'm going to show you a nice little hack. 
here, I'll just reorient this so you don't think I'm cheating here. I'm going to go here, go to Model View, and double click here again. And if my default comes up as front, I can go here. Then it wants to make a projected view here, which is fine. And then I'm going to click on this view, and I'm still in projected view over here, so it makes a projected view from this view. I'm going to go up like this, and then hit Escape, delete that view. And then I'm going to click on this, delete that view. Yes, and now I have the view I want. So there are uh, a number of ways, probably more than what I showed you, to get this view that you're looking for. The next thing I want to do is bring out the other configurations. So I'm going to make a series of projected views. Now you could do this one at a time. I'm going to do all four just to show you how it's done and it sometimes makes it easier. So I'm going to go here green check mark another projected view based on this one here and then another one right there I didn't actually have to go back to green check mark now these three are going to be lined up with this one this one decides for the rest of them this is the parent these are the children what their vertical orientation is going to be so this one I can move back and forth but I can't move it up and down now I'm going to click on this one here and I'm going to go to configuration flathead. I'm going to click on this one here. I'm going to go to hex head. Click on this one here and out pops the Phillips head. So now I have all four of my configurations on one drawing. Now the question is how to tell which one's which and what's in what. So I'm going to make a green check mark, going to go to annotation. And this is a wonderful thing called auto balloon. And I already had this one selected. And it identifies the different parts one, two, and three. Now I don't actually want it to show these ones. So I'm going to cancel out of that. I want it only to show the upper level parts of the assembly. So this is an assembly. This is a subassembly. I didn't want it to show the parts. So I'm going to go to Bill of Materials under Tables. Click on this one here. And I want Bill of Material Type Top Level Only. I'm going to hit my green check mark. And out pops this table. Now don't worry about putting it somewhere else. We're going to change its size and so on. And I'm going to select that bill of materials up here in the corner. And I'm going to click here on configurations. And I want to select all of the configurations. And notice how they come up in this very large format. I can change these column widths by selecting and dragging. So that one came down to match the others. And if you'll notice we are running out of room on this A-sized paper. So I'm going to go to my sheet one. I'm going to right click, go to properties. I'm going to simply click on B landscape and works a lot better. I got a lot more space here. And I can space these things out too. always important to have things as clean as possible, making things as readable and understandable as possible. Anything that's obvious to you is probably not obvious to other people, so you have to work extra hard to make it as clear as possible. We now have our bill of materials. You might wonder why I have a screwdriver handle in the description here as the screwdriver handle example. Well, we'll get into that. So I'm going to go to Annotation, Auto Balloon, and these come up nicely. You've got this pointing to just the handle, this pointing to just the assembly here, this pointing to just the tip, and the same thing for these two. Now, these two 
came up in 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to rearrange them here. Again, trying to make it as understandable as possible. If something can be read ambiguously, it probably will be read ambiguously. Okay, now one more thing is this 2 could be pointing at this part of the shaft as opposed to the whole assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change its arrow so that it points right at the corner here so that if there's any doubt I'm referring to the entire assembly. I could put an extra arrow on here, but that might make it all the more confusing. In case you do not put this actually on the part, you put it outside here, a question mark will come up and it won't get reflected in any data beyond that. So I'm going to make sure it's on that. And then the two pops back. So our assembly drawing looks pretty good. Now I want to go back in and modify what's going on here. You should ask, where do these titles and where does this data come from? Well, SOLIDWORKS assumes that you actually name file names by their part number. So instead of naming it something meaningful, you would have you know part number 1, 2, 3, 4 here. Well, we've been naming things meaningfully, and they, SOLIDWORKS expects you to have a description beyond that. So let's see if we can do something with that at least over in this area. See here's our descriptor, but these aren't actually part numbers. So let's go back to our screwdriver example and we're going to change each of these. Now I'm going to do it once here. I'm going to put all of them in capitals and I'm also going to change this to say part 6800-00 for the base. Call it 6800-01. Now remember we made the Phillips head second so I'm going to change that one to and the hex can be dash 03. And I'm going to change each one's properties. Notice how this is checked using bill of materials. It's a good idea. So this will be Now there are many, many different properties that can be applied in SOLIDWORKS. We're only just scratching the surface. Let's see what happens when we go back out to our drawing. Uh-oh. It says it can't be found. The configuration was renamed, so uh, it's going to go back and try to make it work. Now look what happened over here. It put these numbers on top of the rest of everything else. And this one looks particularly ugly. What the best move is, really, delete that, go to Bill of Materials, click on that particular view, top level, displays one item number, that's good. Hit green check mark and uh-oh, what happened here? Well, I'm just going to put this up here, click on it, and see if I can fix it. Probably in configurations. Yep, none of the configurations are on there. And I wanted them in a different order, so make sure they go like that. And now my bill of materials is in much better shape. Let me change this, and then it'll snap right up into that corner. We have exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so we've got the part number and quantity. So part number 6800-00 has just these two. 6800-01 has these three. 
O2 has these two and then this one and so on. These are all nicely labeled down here just as we had arranged before. Now how do we change the uh, descriptions for the other parts? Okay well it's not as easy to change the description of the configuration as it is a part or a subassembly but still not too bad. But watch carefully. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to open up the subassembly. Go up to File, Properties. Here in Summary we can see that there's spaces for author, keywords, and so on. And in Custom, these are properties that are defined by SolidWorks, but you can type in anything you want for them. So that's what makes them custom. So we've got Description, Part Number, Number of Revision Material, and so on. We're going to click on Description, type in screwdriver shaft assembly and that evaluates out to the description we just typed hit OK and hit save go to window go to my drawing and here it is in fact I typed it in in lowercase letters here so I can go back and modify that file properties and that is updated as well okay so we have the description taken care of but this part number thing this is kind of a special thing SolidWorks knows that you might want to put one thing or another into part number and it defaults to this file name that you have it saved by but we would like it to do something different so for each one of these items you have to go in and change that so let's start with the handle so we're going to right click here and we're going to go open the part and we're going to go into configurations. Now everything has at least one configuration, the default. So we'll right click on that and go to properties. And you want it to use in the bill of materials something different, not the document name, which is this title up here, but we want it to go to the configuration name. Now you can't change the configuration name within the properties here. So we'll just check mark that and then click once here let it hover and we can change it to part number say 5900-00 I'm going to right click on it again go to properties and the default description is its configuration name we're going to call it standard handle Make sure again that that's checked in the use of the bill of materials and that we've got configuration name. Hit our green check mark. Now, hopefully, that took over in our drawing. It's going to get mad at us. And haha, we have changed the part number of our description. And there's a problem here. It doesn't know what to refer to. Well, let's go and change everything else anyway and go back and deal with that. So I'm going to open the subassembly here. And I'll change the subassembly to 5900 5960-00. Right click on it. Go to Properties, call it that, use and build of materials, we want the configuration name, green check mark.
So as you can see, after changing all of those configurations, we have our part numbers. They seem to match up with the quantities that we need, but our part numbers are not actually in order here. It's a little disorganized here, and all of these have asterisks on them, so we're going to have to fix that. That can be quickly taken care of by selecting up here on the bill of materials, going to part configuration grouping, and selecting display all configurations of the same part as one item. And notice how they switched one, two, four, five, three. And we'll just change that around. So that I can start with 00, go to 01, 02, 03. So now these are in the correct order. And these show up as 3, 4, and 5. I want to change what's going on in the title block here. So I'm going to right click on Edit Sheet Format, double click here and notice that I can put anything in here. I mean, I could double click on this and just start typing, but that would remove any of the parametric associations which really help our documentation and modeling. So what I want to do is double click on this and go to this part here, link to property. Now I could link to something in the current document or the model. So I want to refer to something in the model. And clicking on File Properties will get me a whole bunch of different things. I can use any of these properties in the custom. I can also use some of these non-custom. These are SolidWorks properties. A you know, file name could be it. So what I'm going to do is I would like to go back there, go to Model, File Properties, and I want to use the part number. Right now it says Screwdriver Example. So that's what I'm going to use. Hit OK. Now that's not going to change what we actually have down here, but I just wanted to show you how to make that work. And then I'm going to go back to Edit Sheet. These orange things mean we need to just regenerate it. Now I'm going to go to our screwdriver example model. Go to File, Properties, and here's our part number. And I'm going to change it from screwdriver example to 6800-XX. So this encompasses anything that is 6800 or other configurations, base, flathead, whatever you want to call them. So I'm going to go over to our sheet one example, and my drawing number is updated. I want to change up this title here. I'm going to right click again, go to edit sheet format, double click here go over to that symbol there, link to property, and I want to do it to the model. I want it to go to the description in the model. Right now there is no description in the model, so I probably should have done that first. All right. Go back. File, Properties, and so it called out the description, so I just need to put that in there. Hit OK. Go back to my drawing, and it is there. You can do that with a variety of other parameters and populate all these different places. You can create your own, uh, so many different options. I just wanted to show you a few of them and how they can be used. Now to 
make some very basic dimensions. These are dimensions that might not be on a drawing. So imagine that you were going to package this and the packaging designer needs to know some of the basic dimensions of these parts. So here's the base default part and I'm going to continue to dimension this one here so if they needed to package the flathead would need to have that kind of space and notice how I'm using the maximum again. A packaging designer might also want to know the outside dimensions here. Notice how this dimension is also a little different. The other dimensions are probably pretty straightforward from the part drawings. They could ask for additional dimensions as needed. For an assembly drawing, you just want to give most of the basics, especially something that might not be given directly in a part drawing. So since none of those part drawings had uh, the combination, the assembly, and the total length and exactly how they work out. I mean, they could do the math, but uh, make it easy for them. Let the uh, SolidWorks do it. I'm going to change each of these, holding my control key down. I'm going to make them one decimal place, and then, of course, clean them up a little bit. Sure this one's labeled typical. Likewise here. Same thing here. That's going to be the same for all of the configurations. Okay, and for now, I believe this is all set. In this video, we started off with our screwdriver assembly and all its configurations, brought it over to a drawing. Even though that drawing was a little small, we showed how to change the size of the drawing. We showed how to auto balloon, brought in a bill of materials, wrestled with how to change descriptions and part numbers and how to make things look a little better. Okay, can even double click on each one of these. Auto size itself. Try to make it look neat showed how to uh, modify the title block with uh, properties from SolidWorks or from the custom properties that a user might enter and finished off with some very basic dimensioning and again making the effort to make it look good. I hope that this helped and I hope that you learned a lot during this project.